Hey everyone, my name is Susie from WordStream by Local IQ, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create your first Google Ads campaign. Let's get started. All right, so once you're logged into your Google Ads account, you're gonna see a screen like this. And what this does is it gives you a series of prompts that'll help create your campaign for you. However, something that's really important that I do here is I'm going to hit switch to expert mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And what that does is it brings me directly into the platform and allows for a little bit more manual control over how I'm going to build out my account. So once I'm in here, it's going to prompt me through creating my first campaign. And the first step is to select a campaign goal. Um, now this will depend on what you select as your conversion actions. For this case, I'm going to go ahead and create a campaign without a goal guidance. So then you can select your campaign type. Now, when you're first starting out in Google Ads, while you do want to take things slow, you also want to have a variety of campaign types to make sure you're really covering your bases across the Google Ad Network. That being said, for today's purposes, I'm going to go ahead and do a standard search campaign. Now it's going to ask what my results might be. Again, this will vary for everyone based on their main goals or their main conversion actions. Uh, for this case, I'm just gonna hit website visits and I'll put in my website here. Now you can name your campaign whatever you want. It does not impact your performance or anything like that. Just make sure that it's easy for you to navigate and understand. Now, this is where you can select your ad network. Um, for a standard search campaign, we're gonna opt out of that Google Display Network. Uh, this is an option, however, the text ads that you create with search campaigns definitely look a little wonky um, across the Google Display websites. So I'm going to opt out of that. And then for the search network, this is where you're showing to Google search partners when you have this checkbox here. I'm going to unclick that as well. So those are those subsidiaries that Google owns that you could also show your ad on. Um, in this case, I'm just going to opt out of that. So now I'm just going to be opted in to show on the search network. And that's by default with that search campaign. So I'm going into my settings here. There's a couple other things that you could definitely play around with. You could have a start and end date so you don't have to worry about pausing your campaign later. You could also change out any like sort of dynamic ads or potentially set up an ad schedule. Now this is where we set up our location targeting here. So I'm going to select a couple locations. I'm going to enter another location here. And so you can type it in and have results come here, but it is kind of cool to do an advanced search just to make sure that you're in the right area. This is where you could do like radius targeting or you have a list that you could add or anything like that. So I know off the bat, I'm going to do a couple counties here. So I'll go ahead and hit save there. Now the other kind of advanced options that you have here is to opt into what type of qualifying people within those locations you show to. So I'm going to drop down into the presence of 
only showing to people in or regularly in my targeted locations. And the reason why is with this top option that it defaults to, you're showing to folks in your targeted locations or also those who've shown interest in your targeted locations. So for example, I could be living all the way in California, but planning a vacation to Massachusetts and potentially see your ad with this setting here. So that's not necessarily what I want. All right, so this is where I can set my budget. So we have some resources on setting your daily budget, but essentially how it works, it's going to average out to an overall monthly spend. So if my daily budget is $10 to ideally equal about $300 or so in spend for the month, you know, it might spend that full $10 one day, it might spend, you know, $5 the next and then 15 the following day. So with this case here, I'm just going to put in a placeholder number and I can figure out my budget later. We have a lot of resources on these different types of bidding strategies. What we have here is manual is a really good starting option for brand new accounts. So that's where you individually pick max cost per click bids for each of your keywords. Um, of course, the drawback to that is it's a little tedious, right? You're going to have to stay on top of those bids to make sure you're staying competitive. Um, so I am a big believer in the automated bid strategies just because they are a little bit easier, especially if I don't have historical data to go off of here, right? So I don't necessarily know what I should set my manual cost per click bid to. So maybe I'll let Google do the bidding for a little bit just to collect um, some data here. <laughs> Um, in a nutshell, kind of what these mean is next you're saying, all right, Google, take my budget, you know, bid whatever you need to bid to get me the most clicks possible or the most conversions possible or to get the most bang for my buck with conversion value or to have me be showing towards the top of the cert if I'm in a really competitive industry. Um, so I'm going to just stick with maximize clicks. And the reason for that also is I have seen historically that the more historical data you have for the automating bidding strategies to go off of, the better they perform, right? Because they're basing it off data. It's all automated by Google's machine learning. Uh, so with that being said, I'm just going to stick with maximize clicks. Now, it, with some of these bid strategies, we do have the option to set a maximum cost per click bid limit or a target CPA limit. You'll see options like that varying depending on the type of bid strategy you select. Um, I would say this is a good option to opt into with the maximize click strategy. And the reason why I say that is because you still want to maintain some of that control. <laughs> So if I know my average cost per click is, you know, $3 per day, I don't want to be spending with a $10 budget, $10 on one click. I want to be able to cap, cap that off so I can maximize the amount of clicks I can get with my daily budget. Um, now, be careful of this, right? So you don't want to set it too low. You know, ideally, we would all only want to pay a penny for a click. Um, but with this, you want to just set it at a nice healthy medium in between what you're comfortable bidding on uh, so that you can kind of keep your spend in control while not limiting yourself when your bid is too low you'll end up you know ranking a little bit lower maybe not even showing at times uh, so for this case here I know I want to at least get two clicks per day so I'll cap it off at five dollars <laughs> Now, the other option here for a portfolio strategy, um, probably not necessary for beginners here, but just so you know what this means, it essentially is saying that you would have one overall bidding strategy that will apply to multiple campaigns within your account. So it makes it a little bit easier to manage. Um, it is more commonly used for folks that have their accounts uh, fairly built out, uh, but in this case, it's not going to apply. And we also have this option for ad rotation under these extra settings. I'm just going to stick with optimizing for the best performing ads. Um, that's usually the most common thing I do see with accounts. Um, you can rotate ads indefinitely if you maybe want to do a true A-B test, but honestly, you kind of want to select this to start because 
Google will continuously pick the ad that has the best data to go off of. Um, and that's what you want. You want the best performing or the best matching ad to show up in the search query so that you can heighten your chances to get that click. So it also is going to prompt me through creating some ad extensions. Ad extensions are just you know, additional add-ons that you add on to your search ad that you know build out your ad a little bit more. They help take up more space on the SERPs. And then it also allows you to give the viewers something else to look at, something else to click on. Uh, so it's just overall a nice little benefit and a best practice to add to your ads. So I'm going to start with a site link extension. Uh, those are the most common. And we will see here that it asked me to add at least two. And the reason for that is they actually show in sets. So I can show a quick example here. If I look up Ray-Ban, I'll see this nice paid ad here. And as we see here, we have these two nice little site links down below are shown in sets of two. So I could have two or four site links here. You might also see here that we have the structured snippet and callout extensions. So callout extensions are just quick bursts of text, you know, that free shipping. They're pretty short in character count. And again, it's just another way to kind of build out your ad and add some additional text on there. And then, for example, with the call extension, that would just be a number right here, your business phone number. And that encourages the folks to uh, click on that to give you a call. So again, I want to start off with some site link extensions. So oh, I might, you know, show my resources page. I'll put that in final URL in. I'm also going to maybe pick out my about us page so that they can learn more. And then you can kind of give it a little bit of a description and text, almost like you would with an ad. So we want, you know, um, to choose the main text here. That's what's going to be in blue. And then this text here underneath is the description. So I'm going to say for this resources, because that's the name of the page. And for this page, I might do who we are. And I'll just add a quick description here I'll hit save so I have those site link extensions on that campaign and that'll apply to all the ads within my campaign Great, so now I am in have entered into the ad group phase. So the ad group is what glues everything together. It holds your keywords and it holds your ad copy. Uh and similar to naming your campaign, you can name this whatever you want. Uh, so for this case, I might do core terms because this is going to hold the main terms within this new search campaign. And it's giving me some keyword suggestions, um, but I'm actually going to add in some that I already researched myself. Again, whatever you prefer to use is totally fine. I'm just going to pick out the ones that I already have at the ready. And then the other thing you're going to want to clarify here is your match type. So for example, we have broad, phrase, and back match. Now, when it comes to your match types, broad is the least restrictive. So it's going to show up to anything similar or related to your keyword. With phrase, it's kind of that middle ground where it's not 
super loose when you're showing up to anything and everything, but it, it's not super narrowed down where you're only showing for your exact term. This is going to show to anything that's contextually similar or aligns with your keyword. And then exact is the most restrictive match type. So this is really just looking at terms that fit exactly into the search query or are synonyms to your search query, things like that. Uh, matching behavior has changed significantly over the last couple of years. So definitely check out our resources on that to get more clarity. I usually recommend to beginners to start off with phrase, right? It's that kind of Goldilocks match type. Where so for this, I'm just going to use those connotations that I showed to input that I want these keywords in phrase match. All right, great. So I have my keywords done. I could add another ad group. Now you most likely will want to do this. Again, you'll want to have multiple campaigns, multiple ad groups, multiple ads. Uh, but in this case, I don't need that right now. I'm just going to hit save and continue. So it brings me to that responsive search ad creation portal. And this is a very cool tool because we get some tips and tricks from Google itself. I do like to take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, right? Because at the end of the day, it's my account. I can choose what I want as my ad text. Um, but it is helpful if I want to just maybe get some ideas. I have my ad copy drafted in another sheet here, so I'm just going to copy it in. But you can use what Google recommends. You can see some of the ideas here. All right, great. So now I have my ad built out and we can get a little preview here of what that'll actually look like. One thing that I am going to ignore here, but is something that I want folks to be aware of is that you have the option to tweak the URL. So if you have specific tracking parameters that you want to use um, or a different one for your mobile searchers, uh, you can definitely do that. I'm going to just hit done and hit save and continue. And that's it. Be sure to check out the resources in the description or just head over to our blog and you'll find everything you could ever need for running Google ads. Thanks for watching.